I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. For well over a year, one of the area's most prized museums closed as they relocated and changed the way we can experience history. Back in 2011, officials started the process of finding a new and improved home for the University of Michigan Museum of Natural History. Today is the grand opening of the, uh, the Museum of Natural History. Here at, in the new museum, our visitors will be able to go through the building and look into re real research labs and see scientists and students at work. There's a fossil prep lab and a biodiversity genomics lab. We also have all new exhibits. About half of the specimens and artifacts are favorites from the old museum and then about half of them are new. So it's the latest science, it's all new, and we think people are really love it. The museum boasts exhibits that we once loved, revamped with a fresh vision. We've got our mastodon couple that people might remember from the old museum. Here they're going to greet you as you walk in the front door, and they're the only mastodon couple in the world. So we have a really unique uh, world-class exhibit right as you walk in the door. There are dinosaurs that I haven't heard of yet, and there's creatures that I haven't heard of yet that are cool and stuff like that. You could see what's happened in an era and see the what mass extinction of that era happened and what is going on now and how you can prevent extinction. This museum is a place where you can learn about the latest science and get really great scientific information, but it's also a place of awe and wonder. You can just marvel at being able to touch a meteorite from outer space, just think about that, or to see the oldest rock in the museum, which is over four billion years old. It's, there are just some really, really stunning things to see here. The U of M Museum of Natural History is open seven days a week and expect to see even more history as new exhibits open this November. Stay tuned and we'll be back shortly with more news and information. The official Earth Day holiday may be over, but in a city dedicated to the environment, the celebration continues. Watch as Ann Arborites share their love for Mother Earth. And stop by Leslie Science and Nature Center Sunday, April 28th from 12 to 4 p.m. for Ann Arbor's official Earth Day Festival. Ann Arbor can call the Earth a friend with the many initiatives aimed towards making the planet strong for generations to come. What could be bad? What kind of winter we're here at the Ann Arbor Earth Day Festival. It's uh, an, a festival to raise awareness and celebrate Earth Day, uh, all about taking care of our environment and protecting our Earth. And I think we're about to see a parade. <laughs> we are fortunate enough to live in Washtenaw County that has an enormous amount of environmental nonprofit organizations that work tirelessly day in and day out to help educate, to better our world. Um, and so to celebrate Earth Day is to celebrate all the people that are working very hard to keep Earth the way it is, the way we want it to be, to have clean water, have clean air, to educate the youth. So today is our party. The party didn't disappoint with education, activities, and entertainment on the agenda. We have uh, over 30 um, environmental nonprofits that are here talking about all of the work they do. What our organization, Citizens Climate Lobby, is trying to do to solve the problem. So we have a proposal that we advocate for putting a price on carbon. We did a couple little skits to illustrate how that would work and why that would help solve climate change. Joe Riley, he's our friend. He was just in his beginning stages and he recorded his first children's CD in the Leslie House across the way with kids from camp. We only have one earth 
that uh, we need to protect it so that our children and grandchildren have the same type of planet that we have and that they can live the same kind of life that we have where all of the resources are available and they have a livable climate. Just really important that we take care of the earth because it's the only one that we have. For more, visit a2earthday.org. It's pothole season, and with that comes a lot of headaches. Before you hit a big hole and blow out a tire, reach out to the city via A2 Fix It. Learn how to report a problem in the city of Ann Arbor in this month's City Roundup in 60. Hello, my name is Robert Keller with the City of Ann Arbor, here to tell you a quick and easy way to report problems to the city that you need to get fixed. Problems like potholes, streetlight outages, or snow or ice on sidewalks or streets. It's called A2 Fix It. A2 Fix It is a tool you can access online. Just simply go to a2gov.org slash A2 Fix It or download the app for your smartphone. Now keep in mind, A2 Fix It isn't for everything. A2 Fix It isn't for emergencies, crime issues, or flooding or water problems. But for practically everything else, A2 Fix It is your best and easy way to let us know you need something fixed. They say there is nothing like the unbreakable bond of having a sister. You love one another and can simultaneously hate each other. This relationship is tested during mornings at 7 as the aging Gibbs sisters cope with a domestic and existential crisis. Joining me is Alice Fowl, director of PTD's production of Mornings at 7. Welcome back to the show, Alice. Thank you. It's great to have you back. And this time it's a sort of different play. It's about older women. Yes. And I actually really like that because I feel like in theater, a lot of times you get to a certain age and there's not that many roles for you anymore and and you're maybe better than other people because you've been doing it for longer <laughs> you know so you're actually giving the, the older generation the opportunity to be in a show yes yes um, and that's one of the reasons I picked it uh, PTD the company that is producing this and um, that I am a member of has been around for 25 years this is its 25th anniversary. Oh, so it's a special anniversary. Yes, yeah. yes. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we, you know, we're all <laughs> getting older, are older, um, to have some a vehicle not only for people in the group, but a vehicle for people who can really relate to the fact that our group is, is an aging group. Mm -hmm. um, and to give actors a chance, actors who are older, a chance to uh, perform because they don't get many, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So were you familiar with the show before, or was this like something you read and then decided you wanted to do no, it? No, I was, when I decide to submit a play for directing, I um, usually go through Samuel French and, or um, whatever the other one is, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dramatist Play Service. Okay. And I just start reading through some of their plays. I'll put in uh, some tags, like older actors, or okay. a certain number of actors. Uh, females, I love working with women. I, I like working with men too, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love working with women. And then plays come up. So this just happened to catch my eye and I started, um, I read the synopsis and then I ordered it and read the play and I thought, oh wow, this, this sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. So here we are. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so this was originally written in the 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the show without obviously spoiling it. Okay. So the show is about um, the four Gibbs sisters and their families. And it's written comically. There's so many funny lines in it. But there's also a lot of uh, drama mm -hmm. in the play. Uh, you, you don't get to live this long without having drama sure, yeah. <laughs> in your life. And they all live very close together in the Midwest. And we also were just uh, researching the author, and he was born in Indiana and then grew up in Michigan, went to University of Michigan. Oh, so he's got yeah. ties here. <laughs> ties, yeah. yes. And um, they each have different issues in their lives. And they're not stereotyped people in terms of age. Mm -hmm. um, nobody has to limp or, you know, walk no around one's with, with a crutch. Cane or or the yeah. cane. No, they're regular people 
who just happened to be in their senior years of life. Um, three of the sisters are married, and there's issues in each of their marriages uh, that come out during the play. Mm -hmm. But back then, people really, at least we believe, <laughs> people really didn't talk that much about it. There wasn't um, divorce. Yeah, you just stuck it you out. You just sort of stuck it yeah. out. And people didn't go, go to marriage counselors. You know, the family deals with whatever the issues are, or the issues are kept secret. Mm -hmm. One of the sisters is unmarried, and that um, surrounds one of the crises of the play. She lives with her, one of her older sisters and her husband. And there is innuendo that she and the older husband, and the husband of the other sister, have been having a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the crises. That will cause a huge rift oh, in your yes. family. Yes. And then there's another sister um, who doesn't live right close by. She lives a few blocks away. She's wealthier. And her husband doesn't want her to visit with her sisters. He thinks they're all, quote unquote, morons. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't want her to visit them. So there's a lot of tension around that piece of the play. And then um, the other sister is married to a man who feels like he's a failure mm -hmm. in life. And uh, he, that starts to evolve um, into having him having an opportunity to take another path. Um, he keeps calling it the fork. I've got to go back to the fork. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's another piece of tension. Then the other, the other uh, uh, idea in the play that um, causes some angst and also brings out some angst in the family is the only son, Homer, who is the son of the father who has all the problems because he never got to be a dentist, um, brings his long time, long, long time girlfriend home um, to finally oh, introduce her to the family. Yeah, because the relationship is like, what, 30 years? Oh, and no, not 30 <laughs> yeah. years, but I think se between 7 and 11 years. Yeah, it was something It's mentioned differently in the play. It was play. something outrageous that you're like, how yeah. would you not meet your family by right, right. your fiancé? Yeah. So when is it? Uh, when is the play? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Can I hold this up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's May 9th is the opening, and we run through May 18th. Mm -hmm. There's two matinees. Uh, there's a Wednesday matinee on May 15th, and there's a Sunday matinee on the 12th. Um, the other shows are evening shows at, at 8 o'clock. Yeah, and you can always, tickets at the door, call in advance. Yes. Tickets they at the they door. They take credit. Yes, we yeah. take credit cards and um, www.ptdproductions.com, that's our website. And if people want information about um, purchasing tickets, pur purchasing tickets in advance, group rates. Also, I want to mention that we perform at the Riverside Arts Center, and the Riverside Arts Center is completely um, available to individuals with disabilities. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just about out of time, but why do you think people should come see this show? I think it's funny. I think it's got a lot of drama in it. And I think it really speaks to either if you are a senior, um, that life still goes on and there's still a lot happening in your life. And if you're not a senior, it's a peek ahead at what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Alice. Thank you. For more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, comment, and share. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI.